everyone and welcome back to DWG TV. I'm Hannah and today I'm joined by Dan Marino. Dan works here with us in SoCo and he works for Crumware and also does some freelance design work on his own. So today it's going to be a different kind of chat. We're talking about how adventure can really improve your creativity. So no matter what kind of position you have, what kind of job you have, if you are interested in being creative, this is a good talk for you. So um, without further ado, can you just introduce yourself, Dan, and share a little bit, little bit about what you do sure. at Crumware as well as freelancing? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm Dan Marino. I'm creative director at Crumware. Um, we, uh, Crumware, we do um, enterprise web applications and software design. Um, and so for me, most days, that's working with our small design team, um, leading us to problem solve. Um, doing a lot of UI UX design. Um, I engage a lot with clients in product management as well as a little bit of project management. Okay. Um, and then working on hand with our larger development engineering team to kind of push those designs into fruition. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's Crumware side of it. And awesome. then yeah, I uh, do a little bit of freelance design work. Um, tends to be a little bit more focused on branding, identity, um, some fun stuff that kind of fills the passion bucket a awesome. little bit. So. Has this always been what you wanted to do professionally? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I went to school for design. I went to design school. Um, and before that, I think it was probably junior year of high school that I took a bunch of art classes all throughout schooling in general, advanced art classes, all that kind of stuff. Eighth grade, you're making like really nice paper mache or something. But mm -hmm. um, in high school, I, I had a really influential art teacher. What's up, Mr. Drews? Um, <laughs> Uh, and pushed me in that direction to be able to say like, wow, this is actually a career like graphic design exists. Like you can, you know, and at that point in time, it was like, I want to design snowboards and which I did at one point in time. And then was like, all right, well, that's that. Let's move past it um, or find something else to do. So, um, yeah, it's, it's always been it. And like I said, I went to design school and then everything has just kind of evolved. Every position, every project, every something else, it's always um, kind of evolving and changing and moving into another yeah. aspect of it. So. Yeah, keeps it interesting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you have a lot going on in your day-to-day -day life between crumbware, sure. your freelance work, and just everything else that you're sure. passionate about. I know you have your home renovations <laughs> and also snowboarding uh, and all of that. Yeah. What is a regular day in the life of Dan look uh, like? So it's, it's, it's gotten, I haven't been as on my game in the last probably couple months, but when I'm like at my best, or probably a couple months ago, it was unfortunately waking up at probably about 5.30 or 6 in the morning. Uh, I had no other time to get time and, and things done that yeah. I needed to get done. So it was like, well, um, nothing's going to distract me at 5 in the morning. Nobody's on Facebook. Sure. Nobody's postings you know so like exactly. all right great um so i'd wake up at five walk the dog uh now my fiance just seen it as most of that uh in the morning at least i've been sleeping in later um and so yeah and i would do a bunch of my freelance work early in the morning mm -hmm. um and even now even though i'm not really uh, i'm not you know as persistent about my schedule being up that early mm -hmm. at this very moment um having some sort of creative warm-up in the morning yeah. is is for me like Pivotal, especially I, I normally come in here. Our hours are normally at Crumware start around ten till six, so that's pretty late in the morning to be coming in. You know, I'm not going to sleep till ten in the morning. So sure. for me, like getting some sort of creative time, um, just seeing the leaves for work about seven thirty, eight in the morning, and then I have a little bit of time to myself to just kind of like maybe decompress time to myself. Whether like I said, it's doing some creative warm up, allowing myself to kind of explore creatively, do some research. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I'm at my best, meditating in the morning is like crucial. Awesome. Um, and I'm getting back to that because it's just like so much stuff going on yeah. lately. Um, and then yeah, normally in crumbware hours, it's any given thing from 10 till 6 or probably 10 till 8. Wow. It's just go, 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 um, bouncing around and you know, problem solving, whiteboarding. I go through whiteboard, dry erase markers like it's my job. <laughs> Expo should get a sponsor. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I go home at about at about 8. Um, I haven't been training or going to the gym as regularly either. It just it, There's just so much on the plate. And sure. then spending some time with Justina and our dog. Um, and then, yeah, normally getting to sleep at a fairly regular hour if I can. On the weekends, it's a lot of home renovations too. What is a regular hour for you? <laughs> probably, yeah, no, probably, I mean, if, if we're in bed by like 9, 45, 10 o'clock, that's pretty good. Okay. I'll normally spend like, in like 30 minutes or so 
watching TV in bed yeah. or something. Bad habit, but like whatever. Everyone does it. Yeah, I think <laughs> guilty habit. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah. And so very important question: What kind yeah. of dog do you have? Golden Retriever, English Cream Golden. Amazing. Yeah. Indigo, awesome. Indigo Barking <laughs> So yeah. Oh. <laughs> so what does creativity mean to you? Oh, I mean, that's such a tough or like loaded question. I remember we had to do some sort of, and it's funny because it, it reminds me of like a question and some sort of video thing we had to do in design school. And I remember like mine standing out, like, what's creativity? Your style, I think was what it was. Yeah. Kind of related. And I remember we were just like, I was like 20 years old. So I was like much more, oh, it's Chris Bradshaw with a two side. He's like said some sort of like steezy snowboard trick and like very <laughs> styled snowboarder. Um, and it's funny because it still kind of applies a little bit like creativity's in everything at least for me and I think in it for for everybody as well and, and we just may not realize it in a day to day I think it's not necessarily like oh you draw pretty pictures in your sketchbook you're that's creativity yeah I think it's everything down to like just like simple tasks and how people go about it but mm-hmm. you know maybe don't necessarily rationalize it or run through it you know going through the grocery store and prioritizing your list and figuring out the best way yeah. um, or you know if you're if you're working on a house project or a renovation project oh this isn't gonna work let me do this oh no that's gonna gonna work let me try this yeah um, is probably it for me it's problem solving it's yeah. elevated a little bit more and mm-hmm. less like oh you do really yeah. cool styled hand typography mm-hmm. um, but there is an art form in making something like that look really oh man you, you made that look easy and it's like well yeah so. Yeah, that's actually a really cool answer. For, Something yeah. that I wouldn't think of because sometimes as a strategist, I sure. think that I'm logical. Yeah. But of course, there is creativity in that as well. Yeah, yeah. Or like having to prioritize exactly. this. I mean, my, my day in working with Chromeware and our team is always just like, okay, this is priority. And my priority list gets changed probably like, and I don't even realize it. Yeah. Or the scope of a project that I'm working on during the day of many projects Mm -hmm. changes. Okay. That change means it affects all of this in this product. Okay. If we do all that and you just like, and it gets exhausting Mm -hmm. if you're doing it that often, but yeah, like little things, like you said, going through, or like I said, going through the grocery store. Oh, let me go through aisle one and get my list together. If you, if you don't, it's like, so it can be a mess. Yeah. (laughs) So that's a really cool way to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so snowboarding, big part of your life, adventure, all of those good things. How has that really influenced your creative process and just how you think as a creative? Yeah, um, I, and like pretty heavily. I mean, I've always been a snowboarder and maybe not even necessarily snowboarding when I was a little kid. I used to ride BMX all the time. Yeah. Um, and so when I was like 13, 14, just always seeing things with a different lens. Yeah. And like, okay, cool. That's not just a handrail. Let me walk down the stairs and get to my car. You mm-hmm. know, it was like, oh no, that's a handrail. That's stairs, so I can manual down here. I can only have up. I can go. And then as you progress on stuff, it just it it's always changing. You're mm-hmm. always, oh, I've I've already accomplished this on that section of it, or I've yeah, already solving. gapped down it. You know, I've already three sixty yep. down it. What can I do now? And so that ability to kind of um, see things with a different lens was a really big game changer. Yeah. Especially moving from like art and like. You know, uh, I'm a, I'm a writing BMX and doing graffiti in high school to like, oh, that that evolves at a certain point mm-hmm. to being uh, like yeah, you said more like more of like the problem solving yeah. side of things. Um, and so for that, it's like like I said, seeing with that different lens and, and being resourceful. Yeah. You know, so like for me, it was I remember always riding the same ledge behind the behind the Walmart near my my parents' house when I was younger, and it was just like I would do that for like years, and it's the same stuff. And as I got better, I would do different stuff on it or I would try different stuff and it's like man just being able to be resourceful in that Mm -hmm. is like super powerful and a super great skill just a life skill in general you know being able to go to the grocery store buy food and say like oh okay this is on sale let me figure out how to make it because it's cheap and and, Mm -hmm. and something about and same thing goes with um, restraints on you know design problems hey I I have to use this typeface Mm -hmm. okay if you're gonna use this typeface then how can we utilize that and leverage it as opposed to it being a just a damper and yeah. a total downer on that side of it? So I think that's one thing. Um, and then that lens itself comes with kind of another metaphor of like realizing that other people see with their own kind of lenses. Sure. Um, so, you know, how different other, other people experience things differently and, and the knowledge of that helps me, my job, and mostly in Chromeware. Of, of designing software for all users and more of a universal design, realizing mm-hmm. that like different people see things with a different lens, literally and 
figuratively, you know, yeah. so do things like color blindness yeah. and accessibility and those kind of things um, is kind of an eye opener as mm -hmm. well. So I think that's one way of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think there's also a side of it too with snowboarding that comes as a little bit of confidence and adventuring that kind of stuff. Um, you know, just you gotta, like willing, being willing to take the risk. Yeah, 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 and being able to kind of push it and um, and and to know that like oh, at a certain point I've just got to commit to this. Yeah. And you know whether that's going into a pitch, uh, going into a sales meeting, you know, having a difficult difficult conversation with a coworker. I mean, any, mm -hmm. anything it could be is like you almost have to. And I hate saying fake it till you make it because I don't like necessarily agree to it mm -hmm. um, too much. But that fact that like okay, cool. I, I, I've got to do this or I have a task or I have a big project I want to do and mm -hmm. you know and, and saying okay I got this let's get after it and prepare fully to, to really get it done yeah um, it's probably a, two of the bigger things it's no more yeah. adventuring that kind of stuff taught me so. that's so yeah that's so interesting that something that you wouldn't consider to be so there I mean you're it's, talking about Snowboarding, BMX, that kind of stuff that you were doing when you were little, yeah. affecting your career yeah. years yeah. later. Yeah. It's so interesting to see how that yeah, it's, is a life skill. Yeah, it's really, it, it definitely is. And I, I felt like kind of weird at a certain point in time because I'm like, man, I just need to like, I'm such a little kid when it comes down to it at heart. So it's like, but so I'm like, whatever, this is just who I am. Yeah. You know, I'm like 31 years old. This is just who it is. Um, and there's a podcast that came out recently called The Snowboard Project. And it's talking about like, industry leaders and maybe snowboarders but also like marketing people and product designers and graphic designers in the industry and talking about pretty much how moving on past the industry has formed their lives and yeah. stuff so it's kind of weird those little, little subcultures and microcosms can have such a huge effect yeah. on how you yeah. raise and, and it's grow. cool that you made the connection yeah there. Yeah. yeah so so i know this just from knowing you within soco yeah. you're pretty i wouldn't call would you define yourself as type A? Like you seem yeah, very organized, yeah. but you're also very so. creative and like you have a good mix of the left brain, right brain. Yeah, sure. So what does that, how does that play into your creative process with you having a plan, you have timelines yeah. and project scopes for crumbware, but also yeah, I know that can be limiting to a designer. Yeah. So what does that look like? For sure. You? Yeah. And it's funny too, because it's like, I always go back and forth. I'm like, is it type, is it type A? Is it not? Like I... You know, like it's, I, I want, yeah. and then I'm like, oh, but you're creative, but you're yeah. not like, uh, so I don't, who knows what I, you're an enigma. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Can't it sounds like right. <laughs> I'm good with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, and for me, you're right. I do have a pretty solid plan yeah. in most cases. Like I can't not go into it without a plan. Yeah. I got <laughs> um, and so like I have to have some sort of plan and some sort of something to go with. Yeah. Um, and so it's always calculated. I mean, I, I've, I've done a fair amount of skydiving. I've got like. And I never got my license. I bought a house and that took up priority. But like people are like, oh my gosh, that's like cr crazy. It's like, you, you, it's insane. I'm like, well, it's not really insane. It's calculated. It's like, it very much is like you look at all the checks and all the systems in place and all that kind of stuff. And it, when you realize it from far distance, and you don't realize all of the, the kind of preparation that goes into it. It seems crazy, but if you're in it and you're doing it in muscle memory and you're and you're like running through the process and procedures and everything, it's actually very safe, you know. Um, so for me, that preparation, it's kind of weird, it's like talking in between design and like adventuring. <laughs> so like if I go too far one or the other, you'll have to like sidetrack me back no, in. That's perfect. Um, but it's like kind of physical prep, mental prep, emotional prep. There's more emotional prep in like the adventuring side of it than there mm -hmm. probably is in the design side of it. Yeah. However, I have shed tears over pixels before, so <laughs> it's happened. Um, and so for me, like, yeah, it's, and some of it is just the, like, from the physical prep, like I'll, I'll I was just in a month ago in Lake Louise, Banff, Calgary, Revelstoke, British Columbia, Kicking Horse, British, or Golden, British Columbia, and a big like snowboard trip. And it was solo, I went by myself, so it's like already like frightening. Um, and for me, it was like, every, and I was riding all new mountains. I'd never ridden any of them, the biggest mountains I've probably been to. And the night before, it's always like a ritual for me, or, or especially in somewhere new, where I'll like wax my boards. And I like wax my boards. And I used to work in a ski shop, so it's just like a little bit therapeutic for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's some of the like physical prep. I know the next day when I go into it, yeah. somewhere new or somewhere where I'm uncomfortable or somewhere where like I may be pushing past that point that like 
I know my gear is in check. I know I'm physically prepared. You know, I'm ready mm-hmm. to go on that aspect. So then it means it's okay, cool. It's a little bit anxiety reducing for me. Mm-hmm. And the same thing could probably be compared to, to the design end of things. Um, Kelsey, one of our designers, and I were on the white, whiteboarding, in the whiteboard, in a conference room, whiteboarding something mm-hmm. out. And I was like, I know we know this stuff. I know we know that this does this and, and this piece of the software is going to do this. And these are kind of some of the rules. But like, I just want to have it down just so we can check the box and say like, yes, we've done our due diligence. We've, we've gotten this stuff. Okay, now let's go on you know, further and figure out what else we have to get done. Yeah. Um, or, or what else if we say, yes, this button goes here, what does that affect? Um, so there's some physical prep there um, on that side of it. Um, but you, know, you have a plan and you have to make a plan to like audible a little bit too. Mm-hmm. You know? So like, yeah, I have a plan. I have these like cards here, but like they're bullet points and they're meant to go off the path. Yeah. Then, like I said, when I was in Lake Louise, I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go here, take this line down here. And like immediately I go take it. And from that angle, I was like, oh, there's a bunch of rocks here. So mm-hmm. you're like, you have to have a couple backup plans and yeah. it's not that you don't necessarily, you didn't do your due diligence. Sometimes stuff just happens yeah. or a client makes changes yep. or you realize something halfway through that like, oh man, I didn't think of that. We, we need to think about this a little bit further, throttle back and, and make sure we handle it the proper way. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, I definitely have a plan, but I also have a plan to like for the plan to go off the rails exactly. and like yeah. probably a couple other backup plans. Mm-hmm. So I always like to like say I keep an ace up my sleeve in some aspect, but um, yeah. yeah, that's that's probably a good way of, of, of I like that trying to kind of keep it in between yeah. both the design and <laughs> exactly <laughs> and no, crazy I'm, adventure side of it. I'm super type A, and yeah. I am like not a risk taker yeah. whatsoever. Like you're you saying that skydiving is not like no, that's terrifying. Well, it, but you describing it as being calculated, like sure. that makes sense, and that's more comforting to someone like me who likes to have yeah. You know, that in place and and like it's it's funny i meant to touch on some of that because like yeah the first solo skydive oh let me i mean yes i know all the checks were in place yes we did all of our like three ring checks and like altimeter checks and like gear checks and like have two instructors on my side but when you go step on the side of that plane and you hold on and you go like this Mm -mm. and you're looking at the back of the wing like everything mentally and even probably all the way through till like the I mean, the first two dozen jumps, I, or the, the two dozen jumps I have solo, a little less, but everything in your mind is saying, like, red flag, red flag. And there's something to it that, like, yes, all everything's saying, like, like no. But in that face, you still have to say, like, deep breath, and, like, still got to perform. Yeah. So, like, same thing like coming in here. I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> all right, we got it. We got to get you know, but like same thing. You got to like, all right, decompress. Mm-hmm. Still have to perform, get the job done. Yep. Um, it's a little bit more than just planning and prepping. Exactly. But that side of it is like, man, there's plenty of times where like people are like, oh, you don't have fear doing that kind of stuff. And in reality, like no, there's like in a, the same amount of fear as everybody else. It's, it's just, just learning to work through it. Yeah, yeah, muscle memory of being like, hey, this is gonna be fine. I'm gonna be fine. Yeah. And just kind of like, you know, hoping that that physical check and preparation is enough to kind of ease yourself in that anxiety so yeah yeah. it's a really cool metaphor yeah we just talked through there yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah, there you go (laughs) so you just went on your big snowboarding trip and um what is that like your travel like how has that affected your sure your creative process i know that you were talking earlier about seeing things through a different lens and understanding the other see the world through their own lens sure how has just traveling really affected what you do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It definitely has. I think um, it's nice because, like, I work pretty hard, work a lot of hours, and so there's got to be some sort of decompress. Mm-hmm. And especially me, too, I tend to, like, pent up that st- stress a little bit you know i'm not really good you probably see me walking back and forth to the coffee (laughs) pot like breathing deep and stuff and i don't look like i'm having fun but i swear i am um (laughs) and so yeah i think it's nice to have that it's not necessarily travel but just like time away yeah to like let things decompress and almost marinate a little bit Mm -hmm. if you just keep grinding day in day out day in day out um Mm -hmm. you know you're gonna burn like i used to work for a weightlifting equipment company um, and learned a lot from those guys. A lot of them were like former 
um, Division One athletes, had gone into NFL training camps, learned a lot about that kind of stuff. And some of the parts in that physical training was that you can't just like train and, and, and like weight lift or train until you puke every single day. And the same aspect here, you can't just like let me work 24 hours day in, day out, day in, day out. Yeah, you have to put in the reps and you have to like be able to work hard. But at the same point in time, you also have to step away and, you know, be able to let that kind of like simmer, you know, be in the marinade for a little bit, come back and then see kind of how you see things a little bit yeah. differently um, is kind of one good way of, mm-hmm. of putting it, and especially too with like the creative and design process. Like creativity is going to hit you when it, hit, it like hits you like those good sparks of moments it's not like let me flip the switch like yeah. i wish if i could figure that out me and i would bottle that up and never tell anybody about it but like it just doesn't which yeah. is unfortunate the number of times in like design school i would just be like housing away on hours and always in there till like four or five in the morning just because um it helped form great habits going mm-hmm. forward but like then i learned was a little bit of like working smarter and harder and just kind of knowing when to like cool the jets and like I need to, I need to bounce out whether yeah. it, and it doesn't have to be full blown travel. It could be, I mean, it could be a lap around the ballpark. It could be a lap, you know, whatever, um, changing your routine, changing you know, your scenery, that kind yeah. of stuff, um, is a huge side of it. Um, and I think travel and for me, I hung out with a guy, Matt, in when I was in Revelstoke and then to kicking horse in British Columbia, there tends to be a lot of, um, Australians, Kiwis, stuff like that. They travel everywhere, which is awesome. Um, so it's cool because, like, man, not only am I seeing, like, there's a bunch of different cultures and yeah. people and, and influences and there's a lot of poutine in Canada, which is awesome. I love gravy fries. Um, so, like, you know, everything from food to um, to people to, to languages to accents. Matt was from England, spent – was on a two-year work visa. I met him in Revelstoke, and then he was driving to Kicking Horse the same day I was. And we're like, oh, well – well, fancy a beer and a pipe, mate, and then we'll go ride the next day. I'm like, all right, cool, sounds good, Matt, you know? And we became, like, best buds and tied after that. But, like, it's just being able to talk to other people, learn from other people's experiences. Again, everybody sees things with a different lens, Mm -hmm. especially people that are much, like, that are unlike you. Yeah. You know, so to be able to experience that. And it's crazy when it comes to creativity, what will jog and spark that kind of stuff. Yeah. So to be able to, like, keep yourself as worldly as possible is... Mm -hmm like become one of those and I, and I haven't even traveled that much and mm-hmm. uh, there's so much more I want to do so but I think it's super important to be able to like yes I'm well informed of other kind of stuff and not only so that way if we go into a, a meeting with you know have a sales pitch or somebody who's British I'm like oh yeah I know kind of some right. I can understand you, you know like relate but also like different topics yeah. and and then, you know, even creative problem solving. Oh, I'm, I saw this kind of problem somewhere else or different cultures or different ways. Of, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's just crazy how all that stuff. It just and broadens design, how you think, yeah. Right, right. And how design thinking yeah. um, really relates um, to some of that. So, mm-hmm. so, yeah, I think that's probably a good one to, I mean, yeah. it's super important for keeping that creativity spark. Mm-hmm. So. How do you make time for that and, like, travel and knowing when you need to step away from the office and with oh, you working so many hours, yeah. how do you kind of prioritize that? Yeah. Um, I didn't, I don't, I'm, I'm still pretty bad about it. Like I'm, I, and, and my fiance just, you know, she can tell me, she'll be able to tell you like, yeah, there's certain times she's like, she helps keep me in check a little yeah. bit. Um, she does wellness coaching and, and stress management and stuff like that. So she's probably like, She's on top of resource. being on top of being like the perfect person for me, like it's like definitely like more so like nails a lot of that side <laughs> of it too. Work perks, yeah. Like, yes, thanks. Um, so she helps kind of keep me in check a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there's definitely like some warning signs and some red flags I'll get working where like, man, if I'm just like grouchy, and if I don't want to, if I don't necessarily, and not that it's a bad thing, but certain days or certain projects or certain tasks on certain projects, you're just like. You know, last summer we had, with work, we had a, a very large workload and you just, you know, I just, we, I worked a lot and yeah. I just knew that like, okay, cool. Like kind of Michael Phelps status posting it in the back of the locker door. I just like, all right, showed up to work and I'm like, all right, I think I had like a couple different snowboarding, like mount, like backgrounds and like, mm-hmm. just, like desktops and I'm like, all right, that's where I'll be. And you know, snowboarding for me is, I can go Southern hemisphere, but I don't have the money or means yet to do that during the summer so i'm like okay i've got to wait until winter to take all of my trips mm-hmm. um so it's cool colin my boss and the owner of crumware uh, was pretty cool about me taking like 
all of my time off in a matter of like two months just to go like snowboard. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, that helps kind of prioritize yeah. it um, and keep that together. And then, yeah, I have to, I have to plan a whole lot before yeah. leaving. Like, yeah. So, and I've got a good design team that keeps things in check. Yeah. So that's, that's really, important. really awesome to kind of build a little bit of, they got to you can have get some trust ownership in, in that. Yeah, yep. exactly. So, yeah. Awesome. So what advice would you give to a creative who's looking to take their work to the next level, take some more risks, sure. really just up level with what they're doing? Sure. Yeah. Um, I think the one reason why I'm probably the, a good snowboarder is I fall a lot. Like I fall a lot. Um, and now it's to the point where like, I don't like when I fall now, it doesn't seem like falling. Um, I can put my hand down. Oh yeah, I meant to do that. Yeah. You know, um, and know how to get around it. So, but that's a byproduct of me like absolutely falling all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think f- like fail early, fail often um, is probably a good metaphor. We work in, in design sprints most of the time, so weekly sprints where you know, okay, cool, this is our task for the week or. It's a modified sprint. It's not exactly technical how Google Ventures talks about it, but it's great because like, hey, at the beginning of the week, we do some research, uh, figure out the problem we're trying to solve or task we're trying to handle. And as the week goes on, we're, we're solving or prototyping that problem. And by the end of the week, we're, we're validating it in some fashion, ultimately, um, yeah. different for different projects and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that methodology is really awesome. That double backs on like kind of an adventure or snowboarding. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be snowboarding. It could be skateboarding or whatever. Yeah. Um, that if you're falling a lot, it means you're pushing yourself enough. Yeah. Um, and now you don't want to keep making, the, you don't want to keep like learning how to do, you know, backflips for three years and just, mm-hmm. I can't get it, I can't get it, you know? Um, but I think being able to learn how to fall and be able to get back up and realize yeah. it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Just mm-hmm. like, okay, cool. What did I learn from it? Okay, I need to do this, I need to do that. Okay, now keep going. And that kind of like lifelong learning and lifelong mm-hmm. um, curiosity towards that. I think is really beneficial yeah definitely. specifically towards the creatives but that's anything i think yeah. any successful at least in my eyes successful people are always like driving to just like hey let me learn more let me learn more um mm-hmm. so i think another beneficial thing is probably like i mean for me i, I busted my tail early on in the career um which is great because like got me to a point where i was falling super often but the more again i probably worked too much um, but hopefully that afforded me that I had the opportunity. I was, I was single, I was living on my own. I could wake up at three in the morning and do a bunch of freelance work and mm-hmm. play, you know, loud music yeah. and like, it was, that was fine. Um, so I think doing that and, 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 and really busting it early on is helpful because as you get older, it's a little bit more difficult with obligations and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and yeah, probably like going back to travel and exploring, um, experiencing as much as possible as soon as you can yeah. you know and, and trips and explorations and adventures don't have to be going on a plane or going somewhere super far away and it doesn't have to cost a lot either there's plenty of ways to do it cheap yeah do tons of stuff cheap a lot of great hostels um and that kind of stuff but i mean it could be something as simple as you know going to congaree uh going to sesqui let me grab a mountain bike and going to harvestin um day trip to Asheville. there's so many trails and things like that yeah. there that are like you know, and again, can I mean, for me, if I'm being in nature, it'd be like just recharge. Yeah. So um, that's a good one, and probably just pushing outside the comfort zone is probably like the last thing that's helpful. Yeah. I mean, like skydiving for sure. I didn't end up getting and proceeding past my like getting to my license. I was like a jump, two jumps away. Mm-hmm. Um, but just it just wasn't. I, I couldn't sustain it. But the fact I'm knowing, hey, there's all these fears in place, um, and I still have to learn how to like. This is fine. This is fine proceed anyway and still get the job done mm-hmm. um, is probably, I tell everybody, it's like, oh, I was kind of thinking about skydiving, I was thinking about that. And I'm like, you need to do it. Like, you just got to do it, especially like solo stuff. Because again, it's that sense of like confidence, that sense of like sense of rewarding and knowing that like, wow, this was in- extremely difficult and way outside my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. And even for me, that's more of my wheelhouse of stuff. And it was still like means like multiples past what I would have imagined wow. so being able to like know that like hey i'm gonna be fine or like hey you still have to perform or um under under stress and under pressure yeah. and the more you do that the more you train it you know yeah. to be like hey this is this is okay and so that's how you keep growing keep advancing yeah so that is all 
really good advice. It should <laughs> sure. be like a mini book. Yeah, yeah. Dan's <laughs> lessons it. on creativity. I could, yeah, they've got Danisms in the office. I was about I to say there's probably that. a a ton of stuff. That, yeah, yeah. I, I really like the one you said too about falling a lot and yeah. being okay with failing. I know yeah. at Debose we have an initiative called the Right to Fail, nice. where basically if That's you're awesome. doing something and it's still in line with our core values and you failed, like at least you were trying. trying. So, Absolutely. Yeah. That's something that we are big on. Yeah. So. That's really awesome. Yeah. So next I like to do some rapid fire questions Sweet. just to get to know you better. Yep. Um, <clears throat> just end the conversation on a fun note. Sure. So what's your favorite place you've ever traveled to? Um, we, we, uh, stuff. I mean, everything I like is involves snow. <laughs> so um, we snowshoed like 10 miles in Rocky Mountain National Park this winter. Um, that was magical. Wow. Um, like, and got like super deep and it was like snow pat and you, you, there was no trail. Mat. So like somewhere deep in Rocky Mountain National Park was really awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, and then probably also when I had just come back from Calgary, I was driving from Golden, Colorado or not, sorry, not Golden, Colorado, Golden, British Columbia on like a trans Canada highway, drove through Lake Louise, drove through Banff and back to Calgary where I was flying out of the next morning. <clears throat> and I drove through through Banff, which is like that kind of known as one of the most like beautiful places yeah. um, on earth. And they're not lying. Like there was a full moon coming up on this side. The sun was setting on this side. I had no Amazing. service for like 30 minutes. There was nobody on the interstate. It's like a big trans can like the, the one in Canada is huge. There was like nobody. And like and I had just gone from like some of the biggest, sketchiest mountains. Like there were like inbound slides while I was there. Avalanche danger was really high. I had done a lot of stuff that was well beyond what I thought I was capable of doing and driving through there and being like, yep. Like I had never been moved to tears just by like beauty. The mountains are gig ginormous wow. and awesome. So, uh, That's where I need to go on my next yep. trip. I recommend it. It's pretty easy. It's cheap too. So oh, there good. you go. What are you currently reading or listening to? Um, currently listening to I don't I need to do a better job of reading Justina does enough reading for both of us combined. I'm not a good reader I don't I'm, read often. I'm horrible about reading um I, I read a fair amount of design blogs and things mm -hmm. like that um but listening to um probably uh Chemical Brothers came out with an album Anderson Pack. uh that's some of it and then like I said there's a snowboard pro it's called the snowboard project mm -hmm. it's a podcast and yeah they talk a little bit about snowboarding but a lot of it turns into Kind of some of this that like how yeah. does that affect you in your career and your yeah. lifestyle and things going forward um and that's a, a solid play when i'm cool. not when i'm kind of driving yeah so yeah i like it yeah what's the coolest thing you're working on right now um man let's see i just finished up um so I'm not technically it's kind of still working on it um some branding and identity work for a line of engine motors, which is pretty sweet freelance stuff. Um, I mainly took it because like it's, it's freelance, like side lance, as I kind of call it, because it's a side hustle. I don't yeah. need to do it. I don't need to take jobs, which is great. But if there's something that kind of like, again, fills that passion bucket, I'm like, uh, you know, for sure. Yeah. So uh, that was pretty sweet. It was for a line of like GM crate motors, not for general motors. Uh, but for some boat motors, cool. that's pretty sweet. So yeah. being able to brand an entire line of motors and do yeah. some custom typography and, and it was cool because I took some of the research that we do, uh, a la crumbware side of things and, and a lot of that design thinking into the approach and it cool. kind of created something that was fitting and, and fun. Awesome. Yep. What's the best advice you've ever received? Um, I'd say probably there's, it's not necessarily advice, um, but there's a saying that some, I can't remember who said it. Um, you're either in three stages. You're either going into a storm, you're either in a, currently in a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. And I remember thinking about that like probably after my first real, somewhere where my first real design job, mm -hmm. and kind of trying to figure out where do I go next, and where do I go, like, you know, where does this take me? And kind of seeing I was dealing with a lot, just trying to like, get my career started and whatnot and being able to think of things in those terms helped mm -hmm. um and especially with that sense of like always evolving always growing always getting better yeah. and that like hey i just got out of a storm 
okay, I need to prep for the next one, yeah. you know, and how do I do that? You know, whether it's financially, whether mm-hmm. it's, you know, personally, uh, whether it's a yeah. physical storm and I need to do some work on my house and so that when my front yard doesn't flood or something like that mm-hmm. again, um, is a really good way and lens of, of, of kind of framing it. So yeah, that's I probably like a that. good one. Yeah. And then my last rapid fire question is who inspires you? Um, yeah, that's a... That's a good one too. Um, you could probably ask me that on any given day, and it may change a little bit. Um, probably, I mean, probably my parents for sure. Um, I have I was always like raised, and I mean, everybody worked hard, um, so I was just like super strong respect for anybody that really like busts their ass and and doesn't do it for for show or mm-hmm. or, or doesn't do it for for glory and you know really does it for their passion and so um or, or just works through it my mom worked in a nathan's hot dogs in new york to work her way through pay for nursing school um same thing my dad is extremely hard working um and justine his parents are both immigrated from poland in the 80s and wow. are both like dealt with plenty of struggles on, on numerous facets so like i think that's said my parents in any fashion are, are a big inspiration and yeah, so anybody that works that way too, there's other industry people, um, mm-hmm. you know, a designer, Aaron Draplin, he's a snowboarder too. Um, same thing, is, is really just has passion, busts their tail, um, and really loves what they do. Uh, other people too, there's an announcer, and uh, it does a lot of things, musician, whatever, again, is always evolving. Yeah. Uh, guy is Sal Masakela, and again, always for, he's a musician, he's a, a commentator, an announcer for action sports stuff he has a tv show on national geographic mm-hmm. um and then another guy too is probably jimmy chin um and he's fairly well known for being a filmmaker and videographer cinematographer um and has done a couple of things like but is also like a, a mountain climber is also an adventurer is wow. also that and so like he's he's done a couple big movies with alex honhold uh, um, about him um, free soloing el cap uh, in yosemite and did all of the filming so like not only is like alex honhold free soloing el capitan uh with no rope rock climbing without a rope but then jimmy chin's also rock climbing alongside of him and filming him wow. um, and has done a couple other things in the snow industry too so like Crazy. that kind of stuff is pretty sweet yeah but, so yeah that is all of my questions. Um, where can people go to learn more about Crumware and then also your yeah. side lancing? Sure, if you sure. Plug that. Yeah, um, Crumware or uh, our website's crumb.io, um, and uh, my Instagram handle is probably the best. It's a lot more adventure driven, but some design stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the Dan Marino cool. and uh, the Dan Marino dot com. So. Awesome. Well, thanks for being cool. here. Yeah, for sure. Appreciate it. And um, thanks to all for being here and tuning in today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. I know I did. Um, super interesting stuff. And I think this is probably one of my favorite DWG TV interviews we've done yet. So hope you all enjoyed it as well. So give it a like, give it a share if you did. And be sure to follow along with us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram um, to find out when we'll be going live next. So we hope to see you again soon and we'll talk to you then. Bye guys.